I'm Dan Johnson talking with James Weeby of Be Light Aircraft and why do I feel like I know this and yet why do I not quite feel like I know it? The reason you feel like you know it is because for about eight years we uh, manufactured and shipped a huge number of ultralight aircraft that had a passing resemblance to this one. <laughs> okay. We shut that down for a couple of years and then after we had learned a whole bunch as to new manufacturing technologies, I brought every bit of what I've learned back into a brand new clean sheet ultralight or EAB design which we call chipper single seat. All right, okay, so chipper is uh, in this airplane too then. You betcha. And is. Chipper is the two-place airplane that James has made a lot of mileage out of recently using technologies like mm -hmm. honeycombed aluminum and uh, these, these uh, construction materials and technologies yes. are at use in this aircraft? Yes, that's correct. Okay, tell me a little more about what you did to achieve that. Okay, so what we did, first of all, we, we focused on performance, cost, materials, and benefits. Uh, and in no particular order, what we wanted to do was to provide a way for some to have a state-of-the-art small aircraft that took advantage of every material where we could cost justify what the cost was in its application. So for instance, the root ribs, which are under the highest stress loads from the fabric, are honeycomb aluminum. The interior ribs, where we're not so concerned about now any I sort of stresses. Them. I see them here, yeah. Some, they're some made just go partially back and some go all the way yep. back. They are made out of CNC uh, Baltic birch. Oh, so is that right? inexpensive and perfectly milled. They come out ready to install. I mean, you got to sand them, but they're ready to go. The uh, uh, airframe, this is a first for me. This is my first airplane that I've made with wood skin. Uh, this is right. thin Baltic birch, but the entire cage is aluminum tubing. So, oh, is that right? Okay, yeah. so wow, you got quite a composite here. Then. Yeah. There's all different kinds of materials so, on and this And then airplane. in the back of it, we have uh, foam uh, combined with the fiberglass. So we have four or five different building materials. Each is the best for the cost for the application, providing the strongest structure at the lowest possible weight. That's, we quite, could, a, that's quite a mouthful yeah, there. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's just like da 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 da, da. So it's, uh, it, everything ends up being a fusion of the very best material in its application for the part. The example is the landing gear. These are 7075 T6 aluminum. Unlike Big Chipper, these are square extrusions, so yeah. there's no additional machining. Uh, so okay. they just bolt on in place. Ridiculously strong. Here we've got a gas spring strut which is an inexpensive consumer product that's just a bolt-on product. Is that right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you end up with a cabin, everything on it being uh, CNC cut. You can see exactly how all the parts fit together. It's like a big model airplane kit. You put it together. A guy can build this cabin in one day. Is that right? Yeah. Really? Now, you're, no, not, not, not the whole airplane, you're talking the, yeah, uh, just the, the cockpit the, cabin the cockpit area. Cabin. Okay. That's correct. Well, as long as you mention that, let's talk about what the effort here is. Now, you said it's, is this a part 103? It's either part 103 or experimental amateur build. Okay. So we've discovered a lot of single place aircraft don't want 103. They want a 103 like airplane that's a little heavier that they're going to fly with an end number. You said it's part 103, which which means it might meet that spec, and if it doesn't meet that spec, if you want to put more stuff on it or make it a little heavier, well then it's experimental amateur build. But when it's a part 103, will you build it? Yeah, we're you, the happy factory, to build it. I we mean. want to build, yeah, we're happy to build airplanes for people. We know that there's a lot of people who just say, hey, I want you to hand me the keys, I want the airplane ready to go, and under part 103 we can legally do that. Absolutely you can, so that's great. Okay, so kind of have it both ways then on this aircraft. On your larger chipper airplane, that's all experimental yes, amateur built, correct? Okay. Yeah. All right. So this airplane here now, uh, this this if it makes part 103, that's 254 pounds of empty weight. So this is a very light guy, is it? Yes, it is. Achieving that by this use of these uh, new materials. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Our minimum build comes in at about 233, 235 pounds. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And speaking of build, then when a builder builds it. What kind of uh, time expectations should they have? Honest 300 hours. 300 and that's hours? to okay. do it right. Okay. And uh, can you assist them with that? Do you? How do you give them directions? Yes. Or how does that work? Yes. We had a guy come in today. He's like, I want to come to Wichita, and I want to be in your... And we do have a build center in you Wichita. You do? Okay. So you will accommodate we have a separate, people. Yes. It's okay. like, I just want you to be over my shoulder while I do the whole thing. I said, happy to do that. Happy to do that. And we've got other people doing that for us as well. So we can help people build, we can provide build assistance, whatever they want, we can legally do under Part 103. Okay, sounds good. 
So, all right, the build process, 300 hours on expectation. Uh, you'll help them with a builder assist. I get all that, but if the guy says, nope, nope, I want to do it myself, have you got full sets of manuals for them, step-by-step yes. -step kind yes. of instructions? And we've got really good CAD, too. We've learned about how to do CAD for aircraft building, so one of the cool things is you can go in, you can look at it, you can see a complete layout of where everything is on the screen of a computer. So if it's not quite clear to you, you have an additional level of support available to you to pull information directly from the CAD. Okay, so they would get this and could operate this this themselves in oh, some yeah. way? Yeah, it's a free viewer. Yep. Ah, I see. Anyone okay. can do it. So on any, any computer kind of thing. Yep. Okay, great. All right, now we talked a little bit about building and the aircraft and its construction and whatnot, but you know, pilots want to know how it flies and how okay. it performs. So talk to me a little bit about performance first and then we'll go into some controls and so forth. First and foremost, this was designed to be a stall, short takeoff landing aircraft. Okay. And the way that we pulled that off by, was by doing some technical innovation. This is a new airfoil. It's very similar to the airfoil that I've used in the past, but it's enhanced to produce better lift at low speeds. Then if you look at it, this is uh, a unique airplane in that it has full span, huge uh, ailerons or flaps. Yeah, they, they so really, we are really big. We crank in the coefficient of lift based on the technology in the wing. Uh, and I was compu I've already demonstrated a 30 foot landing at gross weight in this thing. Is that right? Oh, 30 just, feet. <laughs> you come in, I've got it on YouTube, that's, you can see it for about, yourself. That's about one and a half times the length of the airplane yep. or something. That's very short. Yep. So it's it's it was designed to be an extraordinary, it was not designed to be a fast airplane. If you want a fast airplane, this is not what you want, but if you want an airplane that allows you to get up in the sky, loiter, do some moderate cross country, you know, not with expectations of getting there at you know, You're so, supposed to enjoy the yeah, trip. Yeah, if you're enjoying the time, this is the airplane for you. I also think that brings in a significant factor of safety because it is very, you just go look at the my videos, you can see that the approach and the landing speed is significantly different than other conventional aircraft that you've seen. So, sure, it comes down to something everybody calls kinetic energy. Yep. And kinetic energy, when you're coming in and, and can land at 30 feet, means you're not going very fast. That's correct. Which means even if you blow it, it's yeah. not too bad. So I've been over the runway, and I can just hold the nose up, and I can, I call it my VTOL landing, just hover over the runway until I reach the spot that I want to hit, and I plop right down. Right down there, okay. So tell me a little bit about speeds and performance and stuff like that then. Okay. So, first of all, the calculated stall speed's around 24. The actual stall speed, I think, is right around 26, 27. Uh, FAR 103 is, requires a 28. No big deal there. Performance uh, takeoff roll in the breeze that we have right now is about 50 feet. <laughs> so, and the landing performance is, you know, roughly equivalent. Uh, cruise speed is in the low 50s, unless you go with smaller tires. So okay. you've got these big tires yeah, yeah, on there. Yeah, you've got big guys on there. So, if you put on smaller tires and fare the lift struts, it'll cruise right around 62, part 103. I see. Okay. And if you put on a 50 horsepower engine, then we expect that we would end up in the uh, 70s, very low 70s ah, okay. on our speeds. All right. So, so quite a wide speed range actually for yeah. a lightweight aircraft. Now, I'm looking at the instrument panel here, and I kind of know where you're going to go with this. One instrument. So I see. Yeah, I see one thing. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. Okay, that's our. <laughs> Radiant multifunction, that's actually a three in one. I've got airspeed, altitude, and VSI all in one. And, and, and pretty much all you need in a part 103. Yep. And below it, I've got the uh, water temperature for the Polini water cooled engine and an RPM gauge. And I also have a time meter. That's, that's it. Kind, kind of a lot of gauges. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not so much. That's a great segue to the engine then. Tell me a little bit about power plant. Sure. Uh, my favorite power plant for ultralights is a Polini Thor 250. Uh, it's got several advantages going for it. First of all, uh, reputation in the market for both power and reliability is excellent. Um, I've personally sold around 45 of these. Is that uh, right? Water cooled so it stays cool. Uh -huh. Gear reduction, so there's no belts to replace. Um, internally counterbalanced, so it's smooth. Excellent power uh, fuel consumption. I cruise at 2.1 gallons per hour. Is that, how much fuel do you carry? Five gallons. Five gallons, so part a, unless you're capable. EO, EAB, then you do whatever you want. And you can have whatever you like then, okay. All right, James, well, I'm, I'm kind of out of questions, but you know what? 
other people will have ones that I didn't think to ask. How do we get a hold of you on the web so they can find out all they need to know or maybe place that order? Yeah, everything that you need to know can be found at chipper.arrow, our website. That's the best place with spec sheets, links to the store, everything that you need. Chipper, C-H-I-P-P-E-R dot A-E-R-O, chipper dot arrow. Okay, and since I mentioned your instrument, tell me that web address as well. Sure. That one's a little tougher, radiantinstruments.com, radiant like the shining sun, instruments.com. Okay. okay, there you go. So now you can pretty much got all the information you need there. I've reported on all of James's airplanes over the years and many others in the affordable aviation space. You can find all that on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining James and myself here at Summit Fun.